Okay, we've got you set up with the oscilloscope hooked up to the test leads. Uh, just generic test leads with little hook connectors. We have, we're have we not using a um, probe at the moment because we're not measuring for noise, we're just measuring uh, overshoot. So typical setup, you've got your leads connected to your device under test. We're doing it under no load at the present because uh, if we did under load, it may soften any impact as far as overshoot's concerned. So we wanna know what a no load overshoot from turn on is. Okay, the overshoot shoot out. Let's see how this goes. This is still set to 28 volts. Test leads connected to our output leads that we got with the unit. Uh, not a probe. This is just hook um, clip leads just for the sake of testing overshoot. We're doing it under no load um, because if we're testing overshoot under load, we may skew the results. We want to know what the raw um, uncontrolled or unloaded overshoot will be. Uh, given the caliber of this, well, pricing of this unit. I'm not expecting great results, but uh, we'll see what we can find out and whether or not it's safe to use as you're on off for your main device under test. Okay, let's go. We've got our single shot on our oscilloscope, uh, 10 volts per division in a time scale of 50 milliseconds. So we'll turn it on and see what we get. Okay, don't know if you can see, there's a slight bit of overshoot. So we've got our time axis, and then our voltage rise over that time. We can see a little tiny pip above our finished voltage. So that is overshoot. Let's throw our cursor on it and find out. Oh, actually, that's pretty well bang on. Anyone would think I've tested this before. Okay, so our rated overshoot, a bit higher than I would like, but uh, 800 millivolts at um, 28 volts set on the unit. Mmm, not great. There's no ringing or noise by the look of it at the uh, other side of the overshoot, so mm, that's not too bad. Okay, let's try a lower voltage. Let's wind down to, what's a common voltage? Let's go 9 volts. Some low voltage power supply design sits around 9 volts. There we go. Let's turn this off. We'll wait for it to bleed down. Give a little bit of a help, short the leads together. Make sure we've got zero volts. Single shot capture. We'll turn the cursor off. There we are. Three, two, one, on. Straight to nine volts and, hmm, not too bad. Let's turn our voltage scale down. Ooh, I don't know what this double line juice crap is. It's going on there? I don't like that at all. Hmm, let's do it again. Okay, nine volt test for overshoot. Three, two, one. Uh, what the hell? It's got this radius spike, so it shoots up to God knows what, and then slowly drains off. Let's measure that. It's a more prominent overshoot, but look at that. So let's see. We'll go to about mid of the finished voltage, and then the top of the peak. Just on the top. We'll just bring that bottom up just slightly. Okay. 720 millivolt overshoot. So it's not far off where it was at uh, where it was when we had the power supply set to 28 volts. Well, there you go. Let's try that one again and see if we can get some consistency. I'll leave the cursor on so we've got a, a, a marker to see if this happens again. And we'll do it three times and average it out. See how we go. All right, so we'll turn power supply off. Short the connectors, get everything back to zero state. Hold that for a few seconds. Okay, single shot capture on again. Three, two, one. Bang on, exactly the same. So it's repeatable, two for two. I'm not gonna change my cursors because we're still measuring 720 and they're well aligned. Okay, let's do it again. Third time is charm. So if you're relying on this unit to do precision work, don't use it for turning, don't turn it on while your device is connected. Find another method, either use a mechanical switch, relay, MOSFET, or um, just plug your banana jack in with a definite connection. Don't fumble around the hole trying to find it. Just get it in there. Don't worry, try not try to avoid contact bounce, upset your circuit, especially if it's relying on any sort of timing. Okay, let's do it one more time. Stop, uh, single shot capture, and three, two, one, exactly the same. So I'll give it one thing, it's consistent. So if you are banking on your testing procedures, 
just keep in the back of your mind that this has got up to, let's call it a volt overshoot. It, it'll hurt your lower voltage um, logic circuit. So if you're working with 3.3 volts, um, actually for shits and giggles, let's test 3.3 because that's a common voltage for some of our lower power Arduino gear. Let's see if we can dial that in. Wow, okay. The, as you get lower down in the voltage scale, your fine adjustments get less granular. So you'll be chasing, chasing the set voltage. So the, your fine adjustments become less and less sensitive. Okay, 3.3 volts, let's turn it off. Let's short out our output leads. All right, let's get this show on the road. So we'll change our voltage scale to something a little bit more. Okay, we'll change to one volt. So that means we'll get three grat uh, graticules per volt. Uh, single shot captures on. Three, two, one. Same, same spike. It doesn't ring. There's no ringing on the, on the uh, downward slope, but it still overshoots. Unbelievable. Right, let's measure that, see if we still got the same ballpark. So we want to sit on our baseline. So about there, change our top cursor marker and go to the top of the peak, just touching the top. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit less sitting at 460 millivolts. So that's a lot. On a 3.3 volt circuit, half a volt is a lot. And that could upset things. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, just find another method for switching on the power supply or powering up your device under test. Don't rely on this switch because half a volt on a 3.3 volt circuit, smoke, instant smoke in some cases. If not smoke, you'll upset something. It's not worth it. Well, there you go. There's the overshoot test. Not that great. Not that great at all. Okay, everyone's favorite, the ripple and noise test. We're gonna test first up ripple and noise with no load uh, and see how well, how clean the output is. We're currently still set at our 3.3 volts. Uh, I haven't really got the ideal setup for measuring ripple and noise because my ground lead's not um, the little probe type connected to here. But at, at present, we're on a 200 millivolt scale and we're not showing any noise. And the unit is off. I might dial that noise down just a bit more. The spec, oh no, I'll leave it because the specs, the specs actually say that we're looking at 100 millivolts peak to peak. So I showed a shot of the um, user manual earlier. Let's see if that claim holds any water. Okay, so we are AC coupled because we want to measure noise. Uh, sorry, ripple slash noise, whatever you want to call it. Um, at the moment, currently picking up about eight millivolts peak to peak and the unit's not even on so that's just let's say take that eight millivolts as ambient noise that we're currently picking up so let's get stuck into it here we go uh, what? what is that it's hovering around between 250 to 300 millivolts idling no load so they said it was 100 millivolts peak to peak what Okay, let's crank up the voltage and see if it gets any worse. The trace will settle because well, I'm increasing the voltage. Let's go to 30 volts-ish. We go to 29.5. We're sitting at, well, it's jumping around between, let's get rid of that trace, not trace, the uh, 400. Let's call it 400. It's, it's drifting between 300 and 400 millivolts. No load. What the, come on. Well, it is $80. Couldn't expect much more. So we're not looking at the claimed 100 millivolts peak to peak. No way. Let's have a look here. Let's just get our cursor out and give it a measure. So bottom scale, find the average on the top. Yeah, that window is 320. Probably, if I was generous, a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Why did that just flatline? Our fittings are tight. What the? No. If I manipulate the unit. Okay. It's doing something funky. Okay. Oh, as I approach it. No, I'm not happy with that. Okay. Let's call it 400, 400 millivolts peak to peak. No load. Next up, we'll put some load on it. Okay. We've got our electronic load set up. We currently have a dropout voltage of 15 volts set, which is I'm not too concerned with because we want to uh, increase our load and see what impact that has on the noise and regulation. So at the moment we're set for 200 milliamp load. Let's run it through its paces and uh, see what happens. Okay, we're 200 milliamps and we're still looking at, 
Oh, it's dropping it. Well, I don't know what that is. Every now and again it drops out. And I've, my connections are good. I wonder if there's an issue. Doesn't seem to change with knocking it about. It's a bit of a red herring actually. It's not. Okay, we'll leave it at that. No real. Ch no. That's really odd. Look at that. Why is it doing that? It sort of comes good like it is now. That's now reporting 40 millivolts. 40 to 56. 40 to 56. No way. Okay, let's crank up. Now what's it doing? Is this an issue with my gear? No, my leads aren't making any difference. Do we have a crook joint somewhere? Oh, that can't pop off because that'll happen. No. Okay, something's not right. I'm gonna change my probe. Change the probe out and see if that sorts the issue out. That's pretty bad. That's jumping around all over the shop. No, I'm not happy with that. Changing the probe out. Be back shortly. Okay, change the probe out. Seem to be getting a better reading. I've taken the hook clip off the end of the probe, which is this puppy here, and I've got the uh, pin probe directly in. No, look, it's still jumping around. Every time I get close to it. Oh, it's such, such a red herring. Anyway, we are currently sitting at 300, well, it's bouncing around between three and 400. Let's lower that scale again. 100 millivolt scale, here we go. Mm, averaging. Four to 500. Oh, that won't work. Got to plug it in. Okay, 200 milliamps. It's fluctuating. Crazy amount. It's actually pulsing. Would you look at that? That's at five milliseconds. Okay, we're sitting at, if I was to average it out, about 200 millivolts. Let's crank up the current and see what happens. Well, one amp. So it did settle and then after a few seconds it came back to about one, uh, 160 millivolts. That's at one amp. Let's keep climbing. We'll go to two amps, staying about 100 millivolts and it slowly grows over time. That is odd. Well, now it's shrinking again. You probably can make that out on the screen. It's got a mind of its own. Now it's back up to 200. Oh, I'm currently at 60 watts. Okay, let's drop the um, voltage down and we'll see if we can get to our 10 amps. We'll have to go down to about six volts and crank up to about 10 amps to get our 60 watt, uh, to get our 10 amp out of this unit. All right, off, let's bring this down to about six volts. Let's bring it back up. Yep, the low end of the scale, this is super fiddly. Okay, six volts. We'll try and get our 10 amps because this is rated to 60 watts. Let's go, let's see what happens. Error. Oh, of course it did. Drop out voltage is too high. Let's take it down to our minimum. One volt. Here we go. Two amps, six volts. That's 12 watts. Two amps, 210. No, oh, this is, it's inconsistent. Shout out in the comments if you've noticed this with power supplies because this is super inconsistent i mean we've screwed down to a lower voltage but it's still bouncing around and it's got some crazy signature in that waveform almost looks digital on now it settles that's what it should look like it's still pulsing though over time and then it goes all crazy that's not the load doing that is it it seems consistent though this is not bouncing around the output current all right let's try and aim for uh, get as close to 10 amps as we can so in interestingly when this is behaving itself and it's quite stable, our ripple from uh, volt peak to peak is actually decreasing. We've got it down as low as about 60 millivolts. Let's keep going. Five amps, six amps. There's not much chunk. All right, now we settled. We're back up to 220, 220 millivolts. Now it's dropped down to 90, 56, 60, and that. I can't give a consistent answer this is just all over the shop i think it might warrant pulling down the uh, board and following the output circuit and just making sure we haven't got any crazy solder joints making sure our switching circuitry is all um, well soldered because that's crazy to be jumping around that much isn't going to help matters give us a shout out in the comments below if you want to see in the investigation into seeing why this is so noisy. Uh, so sporadic actually. The noise levels aren't too bad once it settles. Okay, let's go full beans to 10 amps. Oh, 9.99. We're running our 60 watts now. Crazy. 
The old heat sink's getting toasty. Well, you're seeing it firsthand. That output is crazy noisy. This is not even breaking a sweat. Fan's not on. It's not even warm. It's just room temperature. Now we're settled again. Call it 200 millivolts. What was that all about? Now it's settled. Haven't changed anything. It's not these joints. Although they're toasty and warm. Is that a consistent reading? 200, call it 200 millivolts. Happy with that? Okay. Well, this will, this is gonna conclude this uh, round of testing. If you wanna see any anything else, throw your suggestions down below in the comments. I'll uh, try and reply to most, well, most questions and give an answer. Uh, any type of testing you wanna see done, let me know. And we could uh, revisit this and see what we can find out. But at the moment, it's now behaving. Let's jiggle it around a bit. $80, $80 power supply from the Chinese supermarket. Electronic supermarket. Oh, we've unsettled it again. Just gonna check the uh, IEC cable. No, giving that everything I've got and no change. Beat living shit out of it. Beat it into submission. Well, ha, it's the lowest noise reading so far. Between six, oh, now it's upsetting again. Between 60 and 100 millivolts then. Well, I'll end the video here. Actually, before that, let's see if we can crank this up and get the 300 watts out of it, eh? I've got some fairly heavy duty spotlights, halogen spotlights that may give this a run for its money. Bear with me, see what I can do. How's that for a bunny burner? All right, let's get this cranking. This might get too hot to hold. Whoa. Okay, let's point that away from the camera. You can get the idea. That's bright. None of that LED rubbish. This is, this is how it was in the old days. All right, let's go. That's, are you kidding me? That's already 10 amps. Ha. Huh. 10 amps at 9.2 volts and we can't turn constant current off, so we can't force it a voltage. This is a 13.8 volt rated globe. What? Tell you what though. Oh, it's getting toasty. All right, well that screws that idea. 10.1 amps, 93, uh, 9.3 volts, so we've only got 93 watts. This is a 150 watt globe. Um, I don't know if you can see it there. 12 volts, 150, but it needs more than 10 amps to get it there. Oh well. Next time, I might muck around off camera and see if I can get this cranking. Righto, see you next time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe, comment.